daily video Bible reading from the Net Bible, Genesis 16 and 17 from the Old Testament. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not given birth to any children, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, Since the Lord has prevented me from having children, have sexual relations with my servant. Perhaps I can have a family by her. Abram did what Sarai told him. So after Abram had lived in Canaan for ten years, Sarai, Abram's wife, gave Hagar, her Egyptian servant, to her husband to be his wife. He had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. Once Hagar realized she was pregnant, she despised Sarai. Then Sarai said to Abram, You have brought this wrong on me. I allowed my servant to have sexual relations with you, but when she realized that she was pregnant, she despised me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Abram said to Sarai, Since your servant is under your authority, do to her whatever you think best. Then Sarai treated Hagar harshly, so she ran away from Sarai. The Lord's angel found Hagar near a spring of water in the desert, the spring that is along the road to Shur. He said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She replied, I'm running away from my mistress Sarai. Then the Lord's angel said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her authority. I will greatly multiply your descendants, the Lord's angel added, so that they will be too numerous to count. Then the Lord's angel said to her, You are now pregnant and are about to give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your painful groans. He will be a wild donkey of a man. He will be hostile to everyone and everyone will be hostile to him. He will live away from his brothers. So Hagar named the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees me. For she said, Here I have seen one who sees me. That is why the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It is located between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave birth to Abram's son, who Abram named Ishmael. Now Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the sovereign God. Walk before me and be blameless. Then I will confirm my covenant between me and you, and I will give you a multitude of descendants. Abram bowed down with his face to the ground, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be Abram. Instead, your name will be Abraham, because I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will descend from you. I will confirm my covenant as a perpetual covenant between me and you. It will extend to your descendants after you throughout their generations. I will be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give you the whole land of Canaan, the land where you are now residing, to you and your descendants after you as a permanent possession. I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep the covenantal requirement I am imposing on you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my requirement that you and your descendants after you must keep. Every male among you must be circumcised. You must circumcise the flesh of your foreskins. This will be a reminder of the covenant between me and you. Throughout your generations, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, whether born in your house 
or bought with money from any foreigner who is not one of your descendants. They must indeed be circumcised, whether born in your house or bought with money. The sign of my covenant will be visible in your flesh as a permanent reminder. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin will be cut off from his people. He has failed to carry out my requirement. Then God said to Abraham, As for your wife, you must no longer call her Sarai. Sarah will be her name. I will bless her and will give you a son through her. I will bless her and she will become a mother of nations. King of countries will come from her. Then Abraham bowed down with his face to the ground and laughed as he said to himself, can a son be born to a man who's a hundred years old? Can Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, Sarah, your wife is going to bear you a son, and you will name him Isaac. I will confirm my covenant with him as a perpetual covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will indeed bless him, make him fruitful, and give him a multitude of descendants. He will become the father of twelve princes. I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this set time next year. When he finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. Abraham took his son Ishmael and every male in his household, whether born in his house or bought with money, and circumcised them on that very day, just as God had told him to do. Now Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. His son Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised. Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on the very same day. All the men of his household, whether born in his household or bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. God, you know what captures my heart most in this passage? And I just keep going back to it over and over again. It's not the main story. A lot of us who have read the Bible in the past, this is a, a common story that we're taught and do Bible studies on. But I actually keep going back to Hagar. Here's a woman who is under authority in a household where she's a servant. And she does what her masters tell her, what Sarai in this situation tells her, I want you to be my husband's second wife. Um, which was common back then. I know we think of that a little bit oddly, but that was common back then. So when she does that so that, that Abram could have his heir, then jealousy comes up out of that. And Hagar, by this passage, God, kind of seems to, to throw off the first hit, <laughs> uh, lording it over over Sarai that she is pregnant with Abram's son. But Sarai, instead of being grateful that her husband will have an heir out of this, she retaliates back and she causes problems not only for her husband, but causes problems so severe for Hagar that Hagar decides to run away. And where we find her in this passage, God, is just amazing how you wrote this. We find her in the desert, desert, dry and barren and kind of hopeless. Not Hagar the desert, but we find her by a spring in that desert. Just like you are the living water, we find Hagar, who is hopeless herself at this point and angry and frustrated and pregnant and overwhelmed. And the only people that she has probably ever known since leaving her father's household is Sarai and Abram. And now she's left that household and has no one to take care of her. Yet the Lord's angel finds her by a spring, by water. 
and provides words of comfort for her. And the most amazing thing comes out of her mouth. It says, so Hagar named the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. God, I can, I can remember so clearly all the times when I suddenly realized you could see me. <laughs> that you uniquely and specially did something in my life so I could visibly hear or see or feel or touch you. Without a shadow of a doubt, I knew it was you working in my life. You are the God who sees me. Even when I'm in despair, even when I am in the desert and I feel like I have no hope, I have no spring to go to, nothing to fill me back up. Yet you are the God who sees me. You are the God who comes to me and comforts me. You are the God who says, yeah, I get you're in a bad situation. But I am here with you and I'm not leaving you. And on top of it, I know what you're going through. And don't worry because I love you. You are the God who sees me. God, as we go through our day today, let us remember that. Let us remember that you are always the God who sees us. When we feel like you have gone far, far away, you have gone nowhere, it is us who has pushed you away in our circumstances of wanting to be independent and take care of things on our own. And you would think by now we would have learned that there's no humanly way possible for us to take care of these things on our own. But, but you offer such a simple solution that if we will just lay it down at your feet, you will take care of the deserts in our life. You will provide a spring for us. Thank you for being the God who sees me, God. Thank you for being the spring in my desert. And thank you for never leaving me. In your son's name we pray. Amen.